Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, in this video, I'm going to be making some small tweaks to my mini lathe. Now, these are going to be changes that won't alter the function of the lathe or invalidate the warranty, but they will make it a lot nicer to use. And in doing these tweaks, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing it and also suggest a third way that you could do it at home if you wanted to, if you have a mini lathe because I think all mini lathes probably suffer from the problems that I'm going to resolve. So let's get tinkering. This is the cross slide handle. And you can see there's a little bit of movement. What I want to do is take up that slack so that I don't have that because it's quite annoying. And it means there's a certain movement from there to about there where it doesn't actually move the cross slides, it just takes up the slack. So I have this PTFE rod. I'm gonna drill a hole down it and make some shims. I'm gonna make these shims at varying thicknesses and see if I can get one that'll work nicely for that cross slide handle. So I removed the burr with a knife and then just gave it a quick sand with 120 grit sandpaper just to make sure it was flat. I'll now take off the nut that's holding this handle on and add the washer. And now for the moment of truth. Little bit of play there. Well, I can't perceive any play at all. Now to finish the tweaks to the cross side handle, I just want to stop this piece of play here. So let's quickly look at why these handles um, have play in them. So the bolt for the handle looks like this, and the bolt, this shoulder on the bolt, fits against the wheel tight. So you tighten this bolt solid. The handle sits inside the, the bolt and it just floats like so. And here you've got the handle the edge of the handle like that and you've got the edge of the bolt like that with its thread like that and this little gap here is where this bit is a little bit too long so the options to fix this are to turn this down so that it's exactly the same length as this and that is possible but it's not the easiest of things to do because you can only grip it from this end, so that's not ideal. And if you get it wrong, you're then into machining this down. But it should be possible to do that. That will void the warranty, so I don't really want to do that. Another option is to shim it, so to add a little PTFE or nylon washer just to take up that slack. And it needs to be exactly this thickness so that the handle itself still turns when the bolt is securely bolted into the wheel itself. So I need a little shim under it just so that it doesn't do that. So I start by turning this bar down to the right diameter.
this is a little bit too thick so I'm going to sand it down just using some normal sandpaper. This is now 0.75 of a millimetre thick. Let's see if that works. It's still too thick. It's now 0.56 millimetres thick. That's got no movement at all in, but it still spins. That's really nice. Well, that has been really satisfying fixing that. It feels really smooth now and it, there is no play whatsoever in it. There's quite a lot of play in the carriage handle as well. So I might as well do that while I'm here. So I've been able to remove the play on this one just by tightening the nut a little. And it still works fine. But I think it might be better with a washer. So I'm going to add a little PFT washer to it, which I'm going to have to make. And now it's very smooth and doesn't have any play whatsoever. I guess while I'm on a roll, I might as well do the compound slide as well, which has a little bit of slop. Now tightening the nut does actually get rid of the slop, but it also makes it incredibly stiff and hard to use. So I'm hoping that a nylon washer will get rid of the slop and still make it smooth. If it's not nylon, it's PTFE. So this one, at its loosest position, does have a little bit of rock, but there's no in or out movement. It's just rocking. Ah, you can see it there, look. I'm reluctant to tighten it much more. It still works nicely. That's probably the loosest position. There we go. Perfect. I can't. I don't know. I don't think there's any movement on there. I think it's just my fingers moving. I don't think the actual thing is moving. I don't know. I'm not completely sure. Perhaps a little bit. Go on. Let's tighten up a little bit more. That still feels quite nice to use. You know, I can move it just with my finger and thumb like that. So I'm not really putting any pressure on. But it's not moving now. That's really good. So I've 3D printed these washers and they start at 0.2 of a millimetre thick and got to one millimetre thick in 0.2 millimetre increments. And I'm going to see if these work as well as the PTFE shims that I manufactured on the lathe. Now obviously not going to be quite as smooth as the PTFE shims, but the main purpose of the shim is to take up the slack, not necessarily to be particularly smooth, although that is obviously quite nice. So I've already put a PTFE shim on the carriage wheel, but this is the handle and you can see there's a little bit of play. It's probably about a millimetre, maybe a little less. So I'm going to try one of those 3D printed shims, those PLA shims, and see what happens. So here's the black washer I've added. Let's see if that works. That's too tight. So I need one that's not so thick. So this washer is 0.4 of a millimetre. And that now moves, it spins nicely, but it doesn't move in and out. And that's very tight.
One aspect of my lathe that I really don't like is the viewing angle of the RPM meter. As you can see here, I've got the camera at the same angle that I am when I'm using the lathe, and I have to duck down or step back in order to see what RPM it's actually running at. Step back 18 inches, and it's very clear. So I need to adjust the angle of this LCD display so that it's a bit more convenient for me to see. I'm going to start by unplugging the lathe from the mains and I'll take off this front panel. So now when I'm using lathe, I can just glance down to the rev counter and I can see exactly what speed it's doing. This is a lot more convenient than having to crouch down or to step back in order to see the speed. It's not something you necessarily want to do when you're operating the lathe. Well, these changes have certainly made a big difference in the operation of the lathe in terms of what it's like to use as a user. I can now just quickly glance down at the RPM meter and see what speed I'm going. And all of the handles now have very little slop, which just makes them a lot nicer to use. They're very smooth and it just feels like a higher quality machine as a result. If you've enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, then please subscribe. If you know someone that might like this video, then please share it with them. If you've got any questions, then leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.